Good afternoon. In the past, we've used pH as a master variable to understand the chemical speciation of monoprotic acids. Today, we're going to expand that treatment to include polyprotic acids or acids that, that release more than one proton. Good examples of polyprotic acids are carbonic acid, which controls the pH of most lakes and the ocean, phosphoric acid, an important nutrient in lakes and the ocean, and also an important complexant and precipitant of things like lead in regulating lead release in water treatment. We'll also talk about EDTA, ethylene diamine tetracetic acid, which is a hexaprotic acid. It releases six protons, and it is an important ligand used in water treatment. It's in a lot of consumer products, and we also use it for a range of analytical applications. So in this example, I'm going to focus on a diprotic system, which I will define as H2A. And when H2A loses its first proton, we form HA minus, and that equilibrium constant would be Ka1 to indicate that it's the first dissociation. We often drop the A and just call it K1 to keep things neater. Well, once you've lost one proton, you can then lose a second proton, and so that would form A2 minus, and that equilibrium would be K2. So that you'll notice in equation one, I have defined K1 products over the reactants. It's HA minus times H plus over H2A. Similarly, I've defined K2, A2 minus over H times H plus over HA minus. So these are my two equilibrium expressions for the first and second dissociation. Like monoprotic systems, we have to have conservation of mass, and so total HA is the sum of all of the acid species and their conjugate basic forms. So we have H2A, HA minus, and A2 minus. If you have a hexaprotic acid system, there would actually be seven species that you'd have to consider. And then finally, we still know the pH, so H plus is equal to the negative log of the pH. So now we've defined the problem, and if you look at this, we have four unknowns, the three different forms of the acid and H plus, and we have four equations. So now we'll begin our algebra problem. Four unknowns and four equations. I'm going to begin by redefining HA and A2 minus in terms of, and I'll switch colors here, in terms of H2A and H plus, or H2A and H plus. So you will notice that equation six is just the same as equations two and three in the above page. You just multiply excuse me, equations one and two together, and, you're, and then do a little bit of reorganization, and you get equation six. So equation six comes out of the K1, K2 expression. So now I have HA minus described in terms of the fully acidic form and H plus. I have A2 minus described in terms of H2A and H plus squared. And then notice I have a K1 and a K1, K2 expression. So now I'm going to <clears throat> create an expression of alpha i. I'm going to cr actually create three of those, where i indicates the number of protons lost. So alpha 0 is the fraction of undissociated. Alpha 1 is minus 1 h plus. And then alpha 2 is 2 minus h plus. Alpha 0, no lost protons, so our chemical species is going to be defined in terms of H2A. 
alpha one, we've lost one species, so it's going to be defined in terms of H A minus, and alpha two is two species, uh, lost two protons, so it's going to be defined in terms of A two minus. So my algebra now follows. Here's my basic ratio. My algebra now follows in terms of H2A in the numerator. And then my denominator is going to be H2A plus A2 minus, but I'm going to use that H, excuse me, HA minus. That comes in right there. And then this comes in right there. Okay, and now you know why I solved everything in terms of H2A, because the H2As cancel there, 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 and there, and I end up with my final expression, which is H plus squared over H plus squared K1 H plus plus K1 K2. Okay, now we go to alpha 1. And we end up with the same type of formulation, except the numerator slightly different here. But notice the H2A still cancel. And now I get an expression which is K1H plus over the same denominator. And then I go to alpha 2, which is the fraction that's fully dissociated. And notice I get K1, K2 over the same denominator. So this is helpful because you can calculate that denominator once in Excel or another program, and you just change the numerator slightly and you come up with algebraic solutions for the fraction of alpha zero, alpha one, alpha two. Well, the actual concentrations are nothing more than the total concentration, which is known for your problem, times the alphas. And so now I have expressions for H2A H A minus and A two minus. Okay, well, notice this pattern, and this pattern can be expanded to ma many proton systems, and I will go ahead and show you how you might do that. So let's do it for a hexaprotic acid system. Alpha zero is going to be equal to H plus to the sixth divided by H plus to the sixth plus K1 H plus to the fifth. I've, I better put parentheses around these to keep things clean. Plus K1 K2 H plus to the fourth plus K1 K2 K3, H plus to the third, plus K1, K2, K3, K4. You're seeing the pattern that's emerging here. H plus squared plus K1, K2, K3, K4, K5, H plus, plus... K1, K2, K3, K4, K5, whew, and I am done. Okay, well, you certainly don't want to do that math by hand. Um, so this is an expression of alpha zero for a, poly, a, a, in this case, a hexaprotic acid. And if we now switch over to a highlighter... And we'll use a purple here. Notice that this whole thing is the denominator, which we will call D. And so now I can say alpha 1 is the first part of this big piece. Excuse me. Alpha 1 is the second part of this big piece, because I've already defined alpha 0. So that's going to be K1 H plus to the fifth 
over D. Okay, well, let's do alpha 2. It's going to be K1, K2, K1, K2, H plus to the fourth over D. And lastly, we'll do alpha 6, and it's K1, K2, K3, K4, K5, K6 over D. So I hope you see the pattern. I hope this helps. The next video will show you the implementation of these calculations.